Pancake Swap is like the Uniswap of the Binance Smart Chain. It allows you to earn cryptocurrency through contributing to liquidity pools, swap cryptocurrency, farm cryptocurrency, enter lotteries, all while taking advantage of the extremely low transaction fees and fast confirmation times of the Binance Smart Chain. Hey everyone and welcome. I'm Robert with Altcoin Buzz and in today's video we are taking a look at pancake swap. So, for those of you who have not heard, Ethereum gas fees right now are absolutely insane with people spending upwards of $100 in some cases for simple transactions. So, a lot of people have been looking for a way to get away from Ethereum high gas fees while still being able to take advantage of decentralized finance, which is where PancakeSwap and the Binance Smart Chain come into play. So PancakeSwap can best be thought of the Uniswap equivalent on the Binance Smart Chain. So we can exchange cryptocurrency, um, we can do a whole lot of things here, but I want to start with the very basics, exchanging cryptocurrency. So the first thing that you'll need to operate on the Binance Smart Chain is a Binance Smart Chain compatible wallet. Now, I've made a previous video showing you how to set up MetaMask to work on the Binance Smart Chain. You can also install a dedicated Binance Smart Chain wallet in your browser. So, whichever option you want to do, those videos are available for you on the channel. So, assuming that you've set it up and assuming that you've got some Smart Chain BNB in your wallet, the easiest thing that you can do is swap one cryptocurrency for another. So, just for example, I could swap from BNB to BUSD or whatever I might want to do. Now, why would I want to swap cryptos? Well, let's suppose that I want to learn lend on the Venus Protocol. We can see that lending BNB is going to get me a 6.22% interest rate, but lending BUSD would get me about a 13.92% interest rate. So just for this video, let's go ahead with a simple swap and we're going to want to make sure our wallet's connected simply by clicking up here in the top right, connecting our MetaMask. And let's go from, let's see, I have about 0.5 BNB in my wallet. Let's go with about 0.05 BNB and let's go to BUSD. Now everything here is going to be on the Binance Smart Chain. So we're going to go from 0.05 BNB to about 13 BUSD. The minimum received is going to be 12.95. So remember, when you're using these decentralized exchanges, there can be a fluctuation in the value of the assets, the different trades, stuff like that. So if the fee, if the amount that we're going to receive is less than 12.95, it is going to not let that trade go through. The price impact is going to be about 0.1% and the liquidity provider fee is going to be 0.2% of the trade. So um, that's pretty cool. Even the liquidity fee is going to be lower than you would see on Uniswap, which is a 0.3% fee or even Tron. Their exchange is another 0.3% fee. Alrighty, so now that that's set up, let's go ahead and click swap. Go ahead and confirm the swap. It's going to ask us to confirm the transaction in our MetaMask, we will go ahead and click confirm and watch how fast this transaction goes through. This is the thing that blows me away with the Binance Smart Chain. With Ethereum, we could be waiting 20, 30 minutes, but with this, it's gonna take just a few seconds for that to confirm and it's automatically going to be deposited in our wallet. So let's go ahead and refresh this. Success and those funds. If we go back to Pancake Swap, we can close this out and we're going to see that those funds are already going to be deposited in our MetaMask wallet. Now, one thing that I do want to point out because sometimes this happens, people will make a trade and they won't see their funds and they'll start freaking out. And obviously, there's really no reason to freak out because as long as the transaction shows on the Block Explorer, your transaction has went through. Now, as I'm going to show you later, it's still going to show us our tokens with the Pancake interface, but if you just want to see and have that confirmation that it is in your wallet, all you need to go is MetaMask, and then you simply want to go to your assets, and you're going to want to add a custom token, then go to B sccan.com forward slash tokens and simply look for the token that you're supposed to have. Let's suppose that we added the Binance Peg DAI token and the reason I'm showing you with this token is because I've actually built the BUSD into my wallet. All we would have to do is click on the token that we want to add and we're going to simply copy the contract address. So let's go ahead and copy that. Put that into our address, our 
token symbol is going to be die, decimals of precision is going to be 18, and then that is automatically going to show in our wallet. So now those balances will reflect in the wallet. And you can do that with any token um, that you run across. If we go back to PancakeSwap, let's just suppose that I go to my BUSD, we will see that it is indeed in my wallet. So that's just an issue of using MetaMask. If you were using the dedicated Binance Smart Chain wallet, it wouldn't be a problem. At the same time, if we go over here to the Venus protocol, refresh the page, we're logged in with our wallet, it is also going to show that we do indeed have that BUSD in our wallet available to lend. So if that happens to you, as long as the transaction goes through, don't worry, your funds aren't gone, they're not lost, it's just not displaying in your MetaMask wallet. So that's a very simple example of how to swap. That's probably the most basic feature that 90% of cryptocurrency users are going to want to use. But at some point, you might want to step it up and provide liquidity. So we can add liquidity and receive these liquidity provider tokens. So let's take a look at some different pools that are available. We have BNB. We have a bunch of different coins. We have Bitcoin Cash. We have wrapped Bitcoin, we have all of these different things. However, for the purposes of this video, let's just keep it simple. Let's provide some BNB and let's provide the BUSD coin. Now, one thing that I do want to point out is just as in Uniswap, where you have to provide equal amounts of both coins, you have to provide equal amounts in PancakeSwap as well. So let's go ahead and go to USDC or sorry, BUSD. And let's supply the max amount of that. Now we can supply the Binance Smart Token and it's going to automatically calculate how much we're going to put in. So that's the reason why I started with the BUSD. So it's automatically going to approve the same amount of that Binance coin. So let's go ahead and click approve. Again, super fast transaction here. Again, 86 cents. I know this is starting to seem a little bit high, However, keep in mind right now, I did a transaction earlier today on Compound Finance to approve a transaction, not even to go through with a transaction that was almost $100. So yes, 86 cents is not the two or three cents that Ethereum used to be. However, it is considerably lower than anything on Ethereum at this point. So we're going to go with slow. We're going to go ahead and click confirm on that. Our transaction will go through. All right, so now that we've approved the transaction, we actually have to go through the supply function and supply that transaction. So um, just like just like working with Uniswap, just like working with anything else, there's two separate transactions, one to authorize, one to actually go through and make that transaction happen. So we'll go ahead and click supply. We will click confirm, and it gives us a little preview. It shows us how much BUSD we are providing how much BNB we're providing, the rates between the two, and then our total share of the pool. We will go ahead and click confirm on that. And again, I absolutely love how fast these transactions are. Um, it's almost like you're using Ethereum and you're bidding the absolute highest gas price each time because my transactions, I've made several on the Binance Smart Chain and there's not been a single transaction that's taken more than probably 20 seconds. So that's confirmed. Let's go ahead and refresh the page. And there we go. So what we can see, we have these LP tokens that are now in our wallet, the BNB to BUSD. We've got about 0 0.7431. So we are in the liquidity pool. We are earning those trading fees. So what else can we do now that we have deposited to this liquidity pool? All right, so right now we have the BUSD to BNB liquidity provider tokens in our wallet. And just like with Uniswap right now, we are earning those trading fees. However, let's suppose that we want to take things up a notch. We can actually stake those liquidity provider tokens to begin earning cake. And the way that we do that is simply by approving our contract, clicking confirm. All right, so now that that's confirmed, we can go ahead and stake our liquidity provider tokens. Again, we don't have a whole lot, but just to go through the process, we're going to go through it. We're going to click confirm. And what we will see is that that is then going to be staked and we will be getting earning cake as a reward for staking those liquidity provider tokens. The cool thing about this is that we can build upon each other. So we earn these liquidity provider tokens by contributing to a liquidity pool. We then stake those tokens to earn cake. Once we get our cake, we can actually approve cake and put that into the cake pool. And then once we stake that cake in the cake pool, we can earn new tokens. 
Now, I, don't, I know we don't really have a whole lot of cake that we're going to earn from these liquidity pools. So, yes, you could earn cake from the liquidity pool and then go ahead and trade it and stake it in that mechanism. However, for the purposes of this, the demo video, I actually want to just get my hands on some cake right now. So I'm simply going to go through and swap a little bit of BNB to get some cake. And now that we actually have some cake in our wallet, whether you get the cake from trading or whether you get the cake from staking those liquidity tokens, either way it's the same. We can simply come down here, we're gonna put our cake in the cert pool. We're going to confirm. Again, it's like everything else with, even with Ethereum, you have to do a separate transaction to confirm, then you actually have to go through a supply transaction. All right, so now we have the ability to stake our cake. We're going to click the plus sign. We're going to click on the max amount. We're going to confirm our stake of those cake tokens. And then what we see is we have about 0.178 cake that's staked. The APR is about 142.52%. Hey everyone and welcome back. I didn't put a whole lot of cake or BNB or anything like that really into the protocol. So I did need to let this wait a few hours overnight. But what you can see is when we log back in here, we do actually have some cake to harvest. So that is really cool. Now, this is from a combination of the various pools that we are in. So if you remember, we deposited into this BNB USD pool. And then we are also staking our cake in the cake pool here. So we kind of have two different things that we're a part of, but the cool thing is that it allows us to simply harvest all right here on our main dashboard. So we're simply going to click collect and confirm, and it's going to harvest all of that for us. All right, the transaction is confirmed and we see that we have indeed harvested that. Okay, so one thing I wanted to explain a little bit more is how the lottery works now. Obviously, I am not a fan of lotteries in general. I've never played the lottery, so um, I'm just going to give you a little walkthrough of how it works. What you can see here is that you pay 10 cake for each ticket. So right now, I think cake is about $12, so that's about $120 for each lottery. There is, it's a single user lottery, entry limit, no limit. So what that means, you can, you could buy 100 tickets if you wanted to. You could try to buy every single combination if you wanted. Um, but there's four digits and each digit is a number one through 14. So the cool thing about it is that you don't have to win the, the exact number. You don't have to get the exact number. So if you get two numbers in the exact order, you'll win or split 10% of the pot. If you match three numbers in the exact order, you'll get 20%. Four in the exact order, you win 50% of the pot or obviously split if there's more than one winner and the remaining 20% of the pot is burned. And what I want to do is go back and show you some of these past lotteries here. So you can click on past draws, round number 371, the winning numbers were 8, 7, 10, and 8. So if you got two of the numbers, there was 132 people that got two of the numbers and the prize pot for them was 2,030. So just a little bit of an overview how the lottery works. Again, it's not something that I would personally do, but again, you're free to do it, whatever you want to do, as long as you're uh, having fun and know kind of the mathematics behind lotteries work. Um, but it is cool that they have that. So one thing that I wanted to go over, and this can cause a little bit of confusion, it definitely confuses me when I first started looking at PancakeSwap, is the difference between farming and staking. So staking, if you want to stake, you simply need the cake, right? You simply lock it up, you stake it, right? Now, if you want to farm, you need to provide those liquidity tokens in one of those farming pools and then stake your LP tokens. So think of farming Think of staking as kind of the base layer, right? You can stake tokens, you basically lock them up. With the farming, first you supply liquidity and then you take those tokens and then you end up staking them. So with farming, you're farming and staking. With staking, you're simply staking. And then the other thing I wanted to go into was SERP and cake. So cake is kind of the token of pancake swap. However, when you stake cake, what you receive is SERP. Now SERP is used as the proof of stake and it is the way that you vote within PancakeSwap, but it is also the way that you unstake your cake. So basically you trade that SERP back for your, your cake and you get your cake back out of the staking process. Some of the different things that they've been voting on, you can see here, reduce cake emissions. Uh, should we add CERTIC to the SERP protocol? So a variety of different things, different options that you have for you there as well. Now, one thing I always like to try to do in all of these videos is give you a general estimate of what kind of ROI you can expect. And again, I always like to say this is not by any stretch financial advice. You should do your own research. However, with PancakeSwap, 
it's a little bit different to provide an ROI because you can see that it varies widely. So let's suppose that I just kind of start off at the basic, basic level here. And all I want to do is simply provide liquidity. Okay, so the most basic way of earning is going to be providing to these liquidity pools. And just as on Uniswap or anything like that, the amount that you're going to earn depends on a variety of factors, including the percentage of fees that the protocol offers, your share in the pool, and the total number of trades. So with PancakeSwap, we get 0.17% of every trade is sent to the pool as a trading fee. 0.03% is sent to the pancake treasury. So now obviously the more money, the bigger share of the pool that you have, the bigger the size of the trade, that you're, the more you're gonna make. And one thing that's kind of just helpful for taking a look on this is if you go to pancakeswap.info forward slash pairs, it will show you the different trading pools that they have, the different types of total liquidity, the volume, and then as well as the fees. And it will show you here, um, kind of just a breakdown of that, what the expected values are. So that's pretty cool. Obviously we can ratchet things up a little bit. As I showed you, we can then take those liquidity provider tokens and we can put them into the farm. So again, we simply earn liquidity. Now we're taking our cake BNB tokens and we're putting them into this farm and the APR on that is 139.17%. So again, there's a lot of possibilities here. It's all just depending on what you want to do. Do you want to provide liquidity? Do you want to provide liquidity and then farm? Do you want to provide liquidity and then stake? So you have a whole lot of options here. Um, obviously, as I said, it's always important to do your own research, but in general, I am, I'm pretty impressed with PancakeSwap, not just from the functionality of being able to trade tokens, but also with all the additional features that they have as well, the farming, the staking, the pools, the governance, even the lottery. It's not something that I would necessarily participate in, but I think it's cool that they do have it, an additional feature that um, not a lot of other exchanges have built into them, the pancake collectibles. Again, not something that I personally am into, but it shows how they're well diversified across a wide range of different products, services that they offer. So in summary, I hope you found the video useful. Pancake Swap was new for me, so I enjoyed making this video, getting to go through, learn a little bit more about it. I hope you got something out of the video as well. We're going to be focusing um, in the next couple weeks on a lot more of the Binance Smart Chain tutorials. So if you have anything that you want to see specifically with regard to Binance Smart Chain or Ethereum, if you have something on Ethereum you want us to check out, be sure to leave it below. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.